Today we're going to talk about the ketogenic diet. We've showed a few recipes already, but I thought it might be helpful if we talked about starting the keto diet, how to get started and what it means. First, the most important thing is you need to talk to your doctor before you start your keto diet. There are some health problems that are not going to mesh with the, with the processes of a keto diet and it would not be healthy for you and you, you really need to talk to your doctor first. I encourage you to do research on your own and find questions. If you have questions, find the answers, look for them and find them. If you have questions, put them in the comments below and I'll answer them if I can. I have an incredibly awesome doctor that has been very helpful and I'll ask him and he can help us answer questions if we need to. First thing, a keto diet, ketogenic diet, means that you are eating low carbs, moderate fat, and high protein. You can find macro calculators on the internet. Just Google it, it'll, it'll come up. It will help you calculate the, the proper amount of macros for your body type, weight, height, that kind of thing. For me, mine is 5% carbs, 20% protein, and 75% fat. You do need to make sure above all else that your carbs stay under your 20 grams if you're planning to lose weight. If you're planning on maintaining the weight that you have, I think there are different criteria and I'm not there yet, so I don't know. You will have to look those up yourself. I can tell you about trying to lose weight because that's what I'm doing at the moment. By the way, I was down three more pounds this morning, so that makes me a total of 58 pounds down. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Anyway, not only are, is the keto diet about watching your carbs, but it's also about keeping your blood sugar spikes to a minimum. So when you're in the grocery store and you're shopping, don't just look at your carb content on the back. I encourage you to read labels. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. That's just a general basic rule. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Look on the back. Yes, look for things that are low carb or no carbs, but look at the sugar content because sugar has a lot of your carbs in it. There are good sweeteners and there are bad sweeteners, and we'll talk about that more in a minute. A ketogenic diet forces your body to use up all the carbs, burn all the carbs that's there, and then it, it changes over and starts burning the fat. That's why it's important that you have a high content of fat in your diet because that's what your body uses for fuel, especially your brain. Your brain operates either off of carbs or off of fat. It's most effective and efficient whenever it's burning and when it's operating off of fat, but it can't just take fat out of your blood stream. It has to process ketones, which was what your liver turns fat molecules into, and that's what your brain functions on. So you will notice after a while that you have a more clear head, more you know clarity in what you're doing. You can think better. You can concentrate more. I really like that. I sleep better. That was another very big plus. One thing you need to know about a ketogenic diet is there are total carbs, there is fiber, there are your net carbs, and there are sugar alcohols. When you look at a, a nutritional label, it'll tell you total carbohydrates, 10 grams. And then underneath it, it'll say dietary fiber, two grams. And if that's all it says, it'll say sugars or whatever, but you can take the dietary fiber and subtract it from your total carbs, which will give you, in that scenario, it'll give you eight carbs. So that particular, whatever it was you were looking at, has eight carbs that count. That's your net carbs. Some people like to count total carbs and keep that under 20, and some people do net carbs. I operate on a net carb system and it works great. I'm 58 pounds down. It's working. Back to the sweeteners. There are sugar alcohols like stevia, erythritol. There are several others. Those all have no carbs and as of right now, they are th the, the science and the studies have shown that they do not have an effect on your blood sugar. So those are okay to consume on your keto diet. 
There are artificial sweeteners like Sweet and Low, Splenda, Equal. Those also have no carbs, but they do have an impact on your blood sugar. So even if you're having their, that you, you are intaking no carbs, technically, you are still causing your blood sugars to go up, which is gonna make you produce insulin, which is gonna make you store carbs. So it's very important to be careful about the types of sweeteners that you use. Pure cane sugar, white sugar, brown sugar, maple syrup, all those kinds of sweeteners, those are obviously very high and they do, it, they do cause major blood, blood sugar spikes. So you definitely wanna stay away from those. A caution about sugar, if you're trying to change to a ketogenic lifestyle and to live the rest of your life on a ketogenic diet basis, you're wanting to get away from the, your old habits of eating sugars and things like that. While there are ketogenic diet recipes that, that give you sweets, desserts, ice cream, I have found all kinds of stuff. Those fat bombs that we made the other day, those were sweet. They were used two different kinds of sweetener. Most people are gonna want something sweet from time to time. And if you're one of those people that you can do it and it doesn't bother you, go for it. But I, I do caution you that eating, the more sweets you eat, the more you're gonna want. So do your best to stay away from the sweets. And while we're on that topic, the other thing about the sugar alcohols is if it is listed on the back of the package, of the grams of sugar alcohols in your carb content, you can also subtract them from your total carbs as well. Russell Stover makes sugar-free candy that is sweetened with stevia. On the back of the package, it'll tell you, there are several different kinds, but on the back of the package, it'll tell you like two pieces of candy has 19 grams of carbs. That's a lot. One gram of fiber, so that's 18 and 16 grams of sugar alcohol. So that's two carbs for two pieces of candy. So basically it's one a piece. Not bad. That being said, if you keep reading the ingredients, there are some other sweeteners in there that are, um, they're not artificial sweeteners, they're, they're sugar alcohols, but there's, they do cause a slight problem with blood sugars. Read it and see if it's something that you think is worth giving up some of your carbs and possibly a blood sugar spike. Probably not a big one, but still a blood sugar spike nonetheless. Foods to avoid. You should avoid sugary foods, obviously. Grains, pastas, starches, beans, peas, most fruit. You can have occasional small amounts of berries, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, um, blackberries. Root vegetables like potatoes or carrots, parsnips, turnips, those kinds of things, you need to avoid those. Anything that says low fat, sugar free, you need to read. Low fat or diet, you need to stay away from. They usually will improve the taste of whatever it was they took out with sugar. Not a good idea. Eat the real things more. It's, it's worth it. Alcohol is something you need to stay away from. Lots of different alcohols have lots and lots of carbs. There are some that have no carbs. Uh, most of them are hard liquors. Uh, definitely stay away from wine. I do think there are wines that you can drink because they're low enough carbs, but I've not found any yet, so I can't speak to that. Do the research, read it before you drink it. There, It is possible to drink alcohol on a keto diet, but you have to be very, very careful about what you're drinking. Any fruit juices, of course, you want to stay away from. Not only are they sweet from the fruit, but they add sugar to it. It's not a good idea. Milk has lots of carbs. Stay away from milk. Regular milk, low fat, skim milk, stay away from it. It's got lots of carbs. Basically, when you do your grocery shopping, the majority of your grocery shopping is going to be do done around the perimeter of the store where all the fresh fruits, vegetables, produce, all that is located around the perimeters and not so much up and down the aisles where all the processed foods are. One of the other aisles that you need to visit at the grocery store is the water aisle. Plain water. Drink it. It's good for you. It's the basis of life drink water, not only the eight, eight ounce glasses of water that you've been taught all your life, drink more. 
Um, I have read several times, I've read recommendations that you drink one ounce for every pound of weight that you weigh. So a 200 pound person would be drinking 200 ounces of water. I've also, that's a lot. I've also read that you should drink half an ounce for every pound. So a 200 pound person would be drinking 100 ounces. You figure out what you can do. I personally get at least a gallon of water, 128 ounces. That is not half my weight. Definitely drink water. We've noticed, we being me and my doctor, have noticed a very significant difference in my blood work from the days that when I drink water on a regular basis and when I don't drink water on a regular basis. There is a large difference in my blood work um, and you can tell it. What to eat on a keto diet? Eat meat. Any kind of meat. Well, no, not any kind of meat, but eat meat. Chicken, beef, ground beef. We eat steaks a lot. Now that there's only three living at my house, we can afford to eat steaks more regularly. So eat a steak. It's pretty good. Eggs, butter, heavy cream. Not half and half, not, not light cream, heavy cream. Cheese. You do need to watch your cheeses because different cheeses have different amounts of carbs in them. But a lot of cheeses have very minimal to no carbs, so you can eat cheese within reason. You have to be careful with it. Mozzarella, for example, is a great cheese to have around and have on hand. You can do apparently wondrous things with mozzarella cheese and a little bit of almond flour and an egg and just a tiny bit of cream cheese and you can make dough, pizza dough, dough for pizza pockets and, and all kinds of things. Mozzarella apparently is a miracle cheese. Nuts, seeds, avocados, low carb veggies. If you're not sure, look it up. There are several websites that you can just go to and you can just type in a, a vegetable and it'll pop up and tell you how many carbs, this kind of, this kind of thing. Some of the ones that I keep on hand at all times Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts are a little higher in carbs, but still, I love Brussels sprouts and I can eat them and I do every chance I get. Um, herbs and spices, fresh herbs and spices you can use. Garlic does have carbs in it, about one carb per clove of garlic, so be careful with it. It doesn't hurt to add it to a recipe and even two or three cloves of garlic, but remember, it's one one to one, so be careful with your garlic consumption. Olive oil, coconut oil, and avocado oils I keep on hand for different purposes. Those are oils that are okay to use. Don't, you need to stay away from vegetable oils, corn oils. We will do a video soon about, I'll show you my refrigerator and my pantry so you can see what I keep on hand at all times. Very helpful websites or thing, or places to go to get information. My doctor recommended to me to go to YouTube and look up the documentary called The Magic Pill. It has a lot of information. It, it shows a lot of the reasoning and thought process behind why we were all taught that carbs are good, fat is bad. It, it goes very in-depth into explaining why everybody thinks the way that they do and why that learning to be on a keto diet is, is contrary to your beliefs and what you've been taught your whole life. That, that documentary explains a lot and it's very helpful. Another place that I visit when I have questions or if I need to look something up, I use Diet Doctor. It's got recipes, but there's lots of facts and information, good information by medical doctors that can, that can help. Uh, two of my very favorite res uh, websites to go to to get great recipes. All day I dream about food. Great recipes. I have not tried anything there yet that I do not like. And the other one is I, I breathe, I'm hungry. Another fantastic website. Lots and lots of recipes. Both of those ladies have been doing it a very long time and they have they test the, their recipes, they experiment and they test their recipes and they don't, they don't put anything on their websites that is not good. So um, both of those are great. Keto, a keto diet can be as elaborate or as simple 
as you want it to be. It can be extremely time consuming. It can be very fast and very quick. For me, I like simple. I, I, I've just, I've gotten to that point in my life. Simplicity is, means a lot to me. So I'm good with fixing, prepping my meals once a week and then having the same thing one, or it's sometimes two, you know, like to, I'll prepare two different meals, two different lunches for me. But most of the time I will fix one lunch, like the hamburger patties and I'll have that all week. I'll fix enough for the entire week or I'll fix the pizza soup that I fixed the other day. I have that for lunch all week long and then I'll do something different for supper. Sometimes I'll even fix the same. I'll bake a huge package of the chicken thighs I'll throw them in the oven and bake them, and then all I have to do when I get home is pop one in the microwave um, and steam some vegetables. So it, it can be as elaborate. You can There's all these recipes out there that you can get fantastic foods, or it can be super, super simple. It's just a matter of the time and energy that you want to spend on, on it. It, it. it doesn't have to be complicated, and it's not. A lot of times I keep on hand made up already in my refrigerator a cream cheese stuffing that you can put inside of jalapenos you can do it put it inside of um, celery sticks you can dip other vegetables with it and someone suggested to me the other day to use pork rinds and dip pork rinds with it i forget that you can eat pork rinds on a keto diet that's your chip your go-to chip whatever use pork rinds and I, I really have gotten to where i like them at first i, I kind of didn't but you can do lots of things with them amazingly enough and we will cover that in other videos i think that's about it as far as basic keto information to get started how to go to the grocery store what to look for what to read the sweeteners know about your sweeteners it's very very important um questions comments Anything you want to see, recipes you may want us to try, we'll take care of it. Let us know below. Till then, see you, love you, bye.